Hey, he's been explaining to me everything we should encounter. The legend's pretty old, but the details are pretty clear. Listen, dude, I don't care what you say. I'm not killing any monsters. Hey, don't interrupt! These are the great burning claims we talked about. They don't look burning. They look burnt. Hey, I recognize this place. Get ready. He's gonna distract the monster, and you use your heroic powers to swoop in Heroic powers? Yeah. You're the big hero from that prophecy, ain't you? Oh, right. Boy, you guys are gonna be disappointed. And don't forget, go for the weak spot in the armor. Arr. Go! Arr. What happened? To what? The big monster. It's dead, look! That thing? You gotta be kidding me. You guys were here already? This is the original trial of the Great Burning Plains, and funny enough, where the Reds and Blues woke up and they were thrown into the future. To understand the whole next part of my theory, I'm going to show you a clip from one of my previous videos about the time travel, explaining how the Reds and Blues woke up in the desert in the first place. Here's one thing that I've never heard anyone talk about, and it's weird because there's a whole scene about it. Now I want you to look at this picture. Oh, hey, I know where that is. Which of the following best describes this picture? Would you say it is A, the new location where your team was assigned, B, the source of a mysterious energy reading, or C, That's just where we landed. Where you landed. Can you elaborate? Yeah, we were defusing a bomb by this guy Omega, but then the bomb went off and it was such a huge explosion that it totally threw us into the future and we landed there in that place. I'm not sure I understand. The future? That kind of indicates that Project Freelancer didn't have any idea what was going on with the time travel. Maybe they know that Wyoming has the time distortion unit, obviously, but doesn't seem like from that sentence that they knew the Reds and Blues were just thrown into the future. Another piece of evidence that kind of goes with that whole thing. So, then after that, they transferred me to that new base. I guess we left before we were supposed to do what they wanted us to. That's a pretty crazy story, Donut. Your friend from Red Team described a location nearby with a strange energy source. Oh, uh, that's where Tucker is. The Freelance Project found a source of intense energy, so a scenario team was sent to investigate the area, but they left without doing anything. They sound dumb. Indeed. This place sounds like the location of the energy source. You should go there and investigate. We can explain more when the opportunity arises. Okay, I can help you do that. The fact that the counselor, while talking to Donut, shows him the picture of the Great Burning Plains and says that that's the place where they were sent to investigate a mysterious energy reading, and later on it's mentioned that the, the dig site in Season 7 and 8 is where a mysterious energy reading was sent tells me that those are the same locations, if not the exact same location, the same desert areas near each other. You see, it sounds like, according to the counselor, the Reds and Blues were doing stuff before they were sent to the desert. Not woken up in the desert, but sent to the desert. How could the Reds and Blues be sent to the desert by command if they were at that moment being sent into the future to the desert? I think they were sent to the desert by command, but they were viewing time so fast they thought they were teleported. But really, they were living life at normal speed. In my time travel video, I basically explained the evidence throughout the show that suggests this is possible. But to shorten it up here, basically the bomb blew up, damaged the time distortion unit affected the reds and blues to the point where time sped up for them so they thought it was instant time travel to the future. Funny enough, the time travel kind of influences parts of the prophecy and how it unwinds. Because started right after the reds and blues woke up from their time loop, them being in the time loop in the first place when they were sent to the dig site is now the reason they now have to return to Honka Hill in Season 7 for the real trial of the Great Burning Plains. Essentially what we know about Tucker between season 5 and 6 was that he left to go find his son, Junior, and get his sword back. And we see that in a deleted scene for season 5 where he was telling Church that he's going to go find him and he has to go, you know, get them before someone else does. And then in the Red vs. Blue fan guide, we see that he actually traced that back to uh, the alien home planet after he found Junior and he learned how to use his sword a little bit better. But ultimately, it seems like in those 14 months between Season 5 and 6, after the aliens and humans signed their peace treaty, Tucker and Junior were sent to dig sites to negotiate. Why you? We're like ambassadors here or something. Humans and aliens seem more comfortable with us since we're kind of, you know, in between. This led them back to the dig site that they were sent to in Season 3, but left because they had no idea that they were sent there. They thought it was time travel instead of time distortion. 
and they went back at the right time because luckily they were there to intercept CT and his crew. If you include the miniseries Relocated, Season 7 starts off with the Reds and Caboose settling into their new bases. Caboose is trying to create a new body for Epsilon so he can bring Church back from the dead, and the Reds are begrudgingly helping Sarge create a new weapon in the Warthog gun to activate an EMP which will stall the Jeep, and Lopez builds for Sarge a large hologram room to test this useless weapon. The trial starts when Donut returns from the desert with a message for Caboose and Church from Tucker. I need to get someone on Blue Team a message. Tucker! Tucker? It's in the sand. It's in this ad. Donut says that after his meeting with Command, he was sent to aid Tucker, only to find a distress beacon. After a brief conversation with Epsilon, who he's been telling stories about the last six seasons, he decides that he will help Tucker and Donut. Next, he calls Agent Washington to get his help. Unfortunately, he was sent to jail for his part in Project Freelancer and for destroying government property with the EMP. While he can't help Caboose, he does learn, however, from him that Epsilon was never handed over to the feds, and now he has a way to bargain for his freedom, putting him on the next path for him as the Great Retriever. Memory. Memory is the key. But I thought we were done with that part. Aha! Uh -huh! Somebody is down here! Since Caboose can only talk directly to Epsilon in the hologram room, the Reds catch him, and after Griff points out that they deleted the blues from the command database and they can't win the war if they don't get credit, Sarge and Griff agree to help Caboose with his new mission, in hopes that they'll get a chance to put the blues back in the system and get credit for killing them. Simmons and Lopez think this is stupid, so they stay behind, while Donut recovers. Caboose naturally brings Epsilon with him, and when Sarge, Griff, and Caboose arrive at the dig site, they run into a minefield and are saved by a mysterious soldier who goes by the name C.T. Walk four steps to your right. Yes. Um, our our right or your our right? There is no my your right. CT and his team are paired with an alien each. Now I'm sure you've heard about the treaties between aliens and people. We're here to investigate an energy reading. The source of a mysterious energy reading. Funny thing is, CT has a large vehicle known as an elephant in Halo lore. And it has a logo of a woolly mammoth on the side called Behemoth. Look at CT's helmet, and it looks like the mammoth. Brown face, small eyes, and the breathing devices on the sides are painted to look like the tusks. While at the dig site, CT is insistent that the guys hurry up and fix their jeep so they can leave and things get more suspicious as it goes. No, I don't think they know anything. You get back to the temple. Keep working on getting it open. I'll take care of these idiots. Caboose, the destroyer, who has Epsilon, the key, starts getting nosy and snoops the area for a place to put Epsilon and make a new body. This pisses off CT and makes him more suspicious of the guys, and as things get intense, fire erupts from the temples. Cover me! Follow me! Hey guys, run for the temple! I'll cover you, hurry! Oh, my Tucker! Is that you? Yeah, of course it's me! Now move! He distracts CT and his men long enough to get the guys safely into the temple and locks the doors. Tucker reveals that CT and his team killed the original team that was sent there, leaving just Tucker. He tells them that they were looking for an ancient weapon hidden here. And while they are talking, Caboose scurries off to look for a new body yet again. Hey, uh, so if you guys aren't doing anything, you want to help me go find Caboose? Let's go! This is when he comes across the orb, the weapon CT was looking for. Then the guys hear a voice in the tunnels with them. As they round the corner to see, Caboose in the orb, who talks like church. I can't explain. Who the fuck are these guys? The destroyer put the key in the weapon, mirroring Tucker's sword, which was a key and a weapon. Now, as they talk to Epsilon, they learn that he's been told by Caboose to remember church, the Alpha. The destroyer has essentially used the key and the weapon to resurrect the hero. While they dick around in the temple, church learns that the orb has super functions that give him powers. Just like how Andy said the hero would have powers he would use to defeat the monster at the Burning Plains. He has telekinesis and a big laser eye. What we have now is the Great Destroyer who used the key and weapon to bring back the hero who now has powers to defeat the monster of the Burning Plains. CT. His helmet looks like the behemoth on the elephant, but that's not all. He has armor, just like Andy said, and 
Season 9 and 10 Freelancer Saga shows his origins that, in my opinion, cement the idea of him being the monster further. He was the leader of the Insurrectionists, the team that guarded the Engineer. We know the Freelancer stole the Engineer from the Insurrectionists, who we learned later are the car on industry's security force. One of the Freelancers didn't agree with the missions they took and secretly helped Caron gain information about Project Freelancer. She even fell in love with the leader, Agent CT. Eventually, she goes AWOL and joins them fully during their mission to capture the leader in Season 10. And her team tracks her down to Longshore. After many battles that led to the Freelancers killing the security team, Agent Texas and Carolina fight CT and the leader, resulting in Tex killing CT. As Carolina yells at her for killing a teammate, the leader escapes with a wounded CT who dies on the escape pod from her injuries. This causes the leader to take her armor and claim her name after mourning for her, becoming the CT we see in Season 7. This is why he's the monster. He led the team that detained the engineer and helped those who probably experimented on it. Finally, CT's men break into the temple and start fighting, but once they shoot the orb, the aliens turn on CT's men because they worship the damn thing. The battle continues, and as CT flees with the orb containing Epsilon, Tucker destroys his jeep. Gotta time this now! Oh! Tucker, look! He's still alive! While looking for CT, Tucker finds himself cornered on a ledge. Then out of nowhere, Epsilon shows up, and out of anger, he uses his laser eye and kills CT. Tucker and Epsilon together act as the heroes to defeat the monster, and after the battle, Sarge has Griff bury the dead soldiers. And now I can't find them because the bodies were piled over here by these stone pillars, and then the wind came and blew sand all over the damn things. So I guess they're already buried. Good job, dude. I like the way you think. Eventually, when Wash and Meta show up and dig in the sand to find the recovery beacon, they just unbury CT's helmet. It was painted to look like an animal's head with tusks, mirroring the cow skull in the original Burning Plains. I guess that means if Agent CT had gotten an AI, it would have been Moo. I know it's pronounced Mew, but I didn't know that before I wrote this joke. I've seen maybe one other person talking about the monster being CT, but I didn't see anybody comment on his post. And it, I think it was in the, the forums on the Rooster Teeth website. Most of the comments I ever really see on videos is, I love Caboose, or I miss Church. Or the weird one, the lyrics of the actual Red vs. Blue theme song. Like, think about that. Like, okay guys, like and subscribe. Tell me what you think about the video in the comment section. Roses are red. Violets are blue. One day we'll crew. Okay, okay, um, so, wh anyone else, what do you think? Roses are red. And violets are blue. What is the point of the comment section? But wait. Why were washing meta in the desert? Back at Valhalla... Donut meets with a new soldier who Simmons recognizes as the Meta. Oh, fuck! Welcome to the neighborhood. See you later! And Simmons, Lopez, and Donut prepare to either fight back or escape. Until eventually all three are cornered at the Meta's jeep. Luckily, Wash shows up to save them. Until he tells them to give up Epsilon. Confused by Wash's statement, Lopez and Donut are suddenly shot and killed by Wash. Now Wash and the Meta, the Retriever in the darkness, are after Epsilon together. This new turn of events will lead everyone to the next trial of the Great Quest.